At first glance, Just Stop Oil seemed to be an earnest bunch of cuddly tree huggers with harmless non-violent protests, chucking more powder on a snooker table than Jimmy White and Ronnie O'Sullivan on a stag do, invading sports pitches so that finally something interesting actually happens at a game of rugby and blocking roads so that we can enjoy more of our national pastimes, queuing and tutting. Yes, they're annoying, and most of the protests are totally self-defeating. I mean, why protest against snooker? It's literally the lowest carbon sport in existence. They're just pushing the balls around with human-powered sticks and chucking soup on paintings? What's the carbon footprint of a Van Gogh? Was there some misunderstanding about oil painting? Yes, they're annoying, but they're surely just your typical misinformed eco-warriors. I mean, look at them. Angry trust fund teenagers with pink hair and nose rings rebelling against daddy's shares in Shell, even though those shares pay their rent, and harmless white-haired old women in patchy cardigans joining a group protest to fill the void in their life left by their cat dying. They're good people, and even if we disagree with them, we can see they just want to hold hands around a sustainably sourced campfire and make the world a better place. Well, that's the image they project, and a lot of them probably believe it. In reality, they're a criminal street mob funded by green energy baron Dale Vince to push an agenda that benefits his power company, Ecotricity, and makes him insanely rich. He's worth £107 million, by the way. And Dale isn't just funding them, he's also given £1.5 million to the Labour Party, which sounds generous until you realise what he gets in return. The Labour Party have handed him millions of pounds in subsidies, and Keir Starmer just promised to suppress his competitors in the energy market by banning North Sea oil and gas, like a crooked politician being paid by the Mafia to shut down a rival outfit. Let's have a little look at Dale. He's one of those old guys who tries to look young and cool by having the haircut of a non-binary skateboarder and having a scarf around his neck like he just got back from making a documentary in the Serengeti. He's wearing it like a face mask in his profile picture, possibly because he thinks it makes him look edgy, like a Palestinian throwing rocks at a tank, or possibly because he's in the danger age range for COVID. More likely, it's just to stop him licking windows. Dale made his millions as the founder of green energy firm Ecotricity. He's basically Mr Burns, but because he's wearing some beadsy gothic Glastonbury, everyone thinks he's a hero. This is actually unfair on Mr Burns, who genuinely is a green energy pioneer. Nuclear is the safest form of electricity generation apart from solar, and it has the advantage of being available when you need it, not just when the sun shines. Dale funds Just Stop Oil and they bully the public and the government into following his agenda of buying your electricity from green energy companies like his instead of his competitors. Just Stop Oil looked like an organic organisation representative of public opinion about oil that's so strong that they have to commit crimes, but in reality they're paid for by Dale. How is this allowed? Can I pay for a street militia to get members of the public in a headlock and force them to watch my YouTube videos, then like and subscribe? He's paying for his own street mob, the Just Stoppo. We have ways of making you walk. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, and it's an iceberg that hasn't melted by the way. As I said, Dale donates to the Labour Party, giving them £1.5 million at the last count, but he gets that back many times over in government subsidies. Under the previous Labour government, Ecotricity received £36 million in subsidies from the taxpayer, and obviously the subsidies continued under a cucked lefty Tory government. A new wind farm being planned by Ecotricity in Lincolnshire will be the fourth largest in England and is expected to earn Mr Vince a further estimated £4.7 million in subsidies a year. Why are we building wind farms anyway? We already have plenty of wind without growing more of it. And why is it called sustainable energy if it's unable to sustain itself without government subsidies? And these subsidies have a massive cost. The Renewable Energy Foundation revealed that last year energy bills were £2.5 billion higher than they would have been. This is money being taken out of the pockets of working people and handed to green energy millionaires like Dale Vince. Man, we look at Russia and see oligarchs siphoning off wealth from the state to enrich themselves, the exact same thing happens here, except it's dressed up in pride flags and green logos and passed off as saintly progressive socialism. Like an oligarch, Dale even bought his own football club, just like Roman Abramovich, if Roman Abramovich bought a ropey club and made it vegan. Hilariously, despite being worth over £100 million, Dale claims to be overdrawn each month. He's very much the Jack Monroe of multi-millionaire energy barons, and he's been accused of financial chicanery to avoid tax. 
taking £3.2 million from his company in the form of an interest-free loan. That must have cleared some of his overdraft. It's funny how the people who virtue signal the loudest, like Gary Lineker, always act like this. Never mind virtuous tweets. To see the measure of a lefty, follow their money. Dale's ability to fill in a government funding form and get subsidies doesn't stop at his business, by the way. He's got a sports car. I mean, of course, he's allowed a sports car, while the rest of us have to save the planet by trying to suck a gin and tonic through a mushy paper straw. His sports car cost £750,000 to make, but half was paid for by a government grant. Why are bus drivers being taxed? to pay for a multi-millionaire's sports car. Man, subsidies always degenerate into a racket. As soon as the government provides subsidies and grants, people work out how to fiddle them. What's worse is Dale's sports car never gets caught in the Just Stop Oil roadblocks because he knows where they are. Subsidies aren't the only thing Dale gets in return. After receiving donations from Dale, Keir Starmer pledged to squash Ecotricity's competitors in the energy market by banning new North Sea oil and gas development. Now, of course, as a Scotsman, I like anything that gives me an excuse not to get a job. But would people be happy with Keir Starmer taking money from BP and then pledging to shut down renewable energy? And even the most ardent leftist must realise that we actually need our own oil and gas industry because sometimes the sun doesn't shine and the wind doesn't blow. Why import oil and gas from corrupt authoritarian states like Saudi Arabia when we can get it from our own corrupt authoritarian state of Scotland, right here? The police seem to be in the pocket of just stop oil as well. Instead of arresting them for blocking public highways and generally being a massive pain in the hole, the police act as their private security service, chaperoning Just Stop Oil's roadblocks. If a member of the public dares to do what the police should actually be doing and clears the road so that ambulances can get to hospital and mothers can get to their children, then they get arrested. The police love Just Stop Oil so much they were even filmed dragging a protester back into the middle of the road. For anyone who says, oh, but they might have been clearing a lane, drag them to the pavement then. Or better yet, drag them into a paddy wagon and administer a cold truncheon to the face. These protests cost the taxpayer insane amounts of money as well. The Met Police say that in six weeks it cost them £4.5 million to police Just Stop Oil protests. And that's on top of the cost to the court system and the longer term cost is obviously tens of millions. It's even more taxpayer money being thrown down the sustainable energy rabbit hole. The funniest thing about Dale paying Just Stop Oil to advance his agenda is that he gets virtue signalling lefties to pay for it too by saying that he'll match donations. He looks like he's being generous. Leftoids say, oh, look at this kindly millionaire, he's going to match my donations. In reality, he's getting these lefty mugs to contribute to a cause that makes him rich. It's like me saying that if you become a subscriber to my Patreon, I'll double your donation. Actually, yeah, you can. You can sign up to my Patreon, get exclusive content and live shows, and for every pound I receive, I will give myself another pound, because like Dale, I'm an incredibly noble and generous person. Always beware a man who's doing good. We don't do good for no reason. Environmental rallies have historically only been attended by men who are trying to score with one of the loose hippie women. That's less of a reason now due to the increasing uglification of left-wing women and also left-wing men are too estrogenized to try and have sex with anything. But generally, if you see a man acting like they're a good person, be suspicious because I guarantee there will be an ulterior motive. If we're not trying to have sex with someone, then there's a good chance we're trying to become billionaires off the back of the taxpayer. Like Dale. People talk about big oil pushing an agenda, but at least BP just pay for some polite lobbying. They don't have their own private street militia roaming around intimidating the public into using more oil. And unlike green energy, big oil aren't a drain on the taxpayer requiring massive subsidies to be viable. In fact, after selling the oil to willing participants on the free market, Oil companies hand over big slabs of their profit to actually help pay for those ambulances that Just Stop Oil get in the way of. What did Just Stop Oil need funding for anyway? By the looks of them, they're not spending much on shampoo or deodorant. All they have is a few banners and high-vis jackets to try and stop them becoming speed bumps. I had a look on their website. They say funding pays for things like £50 on travel. So they travel to protests to stop other people travelling? That's like protesting against war by buying a tank and invading Poland. Why aren't these hypocrites walking like they want us to do? Their actions literally prove how essential oil is for us. And Keir Starmer says he'll be tough on Just Stop Oil, but he's taking money from them. Would you trust a politician who'd taken money from the Mafia to crack down on the Mafia? 
Of course, that comparison is unfair on the Mafia, who actually do a lot of work in the community and don't stop ambulances from getting to hospital. Labour have been completely captured by green zealots. They've even hired one of Extinction Rebellion's lawyers as an advisor. The fact that Labour take donations from Just Stop Oil shows that they're just the political wing of the green movement, the Sinn Féin to Just Stop Oil's IRA. Why are we trying to stop oil anyway? For all that they talk of fossil fuels causing widespread death and misery, that just isn't true. The exploitation of fossil fuels from the industrial revolution onwards has led to an incredible increase in living standards and longevity and undeniably saved hundreds of millions of lives. Before the industrial revolution in Britain, you could expect to live to around 35. By 2020, that had increased to 81, and instead of toiling in a turnip field for 12 hours a day, you get to sit in an air-conditioned office eating snacker jacks and pissing about on Facebook, and then fly to Thailand on holiday. Fossil fuels don't just give us heating, transport, electricity, they're also used to make the fertiliser which makes our food cheap, and the plastics for Just Stop Oil banners, and the paint they throw on paintings. Stopping oil will make everything much more expensive and lead to unnecessary misery and death. Although obviously not for the posh twats and Just Stop Oil. They'll be okay, it'll be the working class who have to suffer for their sixth form green dream. People with names like Indigo Rumbelow, like they're a minor character in a Roald Dahl book, don't need to worry about staying warm and getting enough food. And Britain is the wrong place to protest. We're the world leader in green energy and one of the few countries that will actually hit its carbon reduction targets. Britain gets close to half of its electricity from renewables and emits just 1% of global emissions, despite being 3% of the world economy. The big polluters are places like China, but Just Stop Oil won't criticise them because they're scared of looking racist, and China actually deals with protesters in a slightly more rigorous way. Fossil fuels are really the ultimate in recycling anyway. They're actually made from prehistoric organisms that fell to the sea floor and ended up buried under sediment. Oil companies come along and clean up these natural oil spills from under the rock and turn them into fuels that are then distributed to helpful motorists to be usefully burned away so they don't harm the environment. The only green I'm worried about is money, specifically the government handing my money to green energy barons. If it's so sustainable, why can't they sustain themselves? Never mind just stop oil, just stop the subsidies. Anyway, I look forward to lots of leftists in the comments telling me to leave the millionaire energy baron alone. If you've enjoyed this video, please annoy those crybaby climate cultists by sharing it and like and subscribe. And if you want to support me making these videos, become a Patreon. From as little as £3 a month, you can give me money, which is great because I like money and I want to be rich like Dale Vince. And you also get access to special content and stuff like that. Okay, thanks for listening. I've been Leo Kears. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>